Hi, my name is Gavin Jennings. I'm a shoulder surgeon practicing in Bath, UK. In this talk, I'll discuss some tips and tricks for anterior and posterior labral repair. Before we even start talking about surgical technique, we need to ensure we're operating on a patient with the right pathology. In reference to the Stanmore Triangle, we're talking about polar type 1 patients with structural damage as a result of trauma. We know from the literature that certain subgroups of the instability population don't do quite so well with a bank art repair. These include the younger patient, those with bone loss, those who've had multiple dislocations, and those with displaced Alpsa lesions. We know that bank art and Perthes lesions do well with soft tissue repairs, and undisplaced Alpsa lesions are probably suitable. With medially displaced Alps lesions, particularly in contact athletes, recurrence rates can be high and in such patients, consideration should be given to performing a bone block procedure primarily. In terms of setup, there's no right or wrong answer as to whether beach chair or lateral decubitus is best. That being said, in the lateral position, the performance of anterior and posterior bank art repair feels more similar to one another than in the beach tear position. This is because the patient can be positioned so that the joint surface is horizontal, making the perspective similar for repairs at the front or back. And I'll go into this in more detail shortly. The use of traction can also be beneficial in providing more space to work in within the joint. In the following video, I'll demonstrate some tips for technique for soft tissue labral repairs in general. Firstly, an EUA of both shoulders should be performed before any incisions are made to assess for any differences in both anterior and posterior humeral excursion. I tend to put adrenaline in the intended port sites not only for the hemostatic effect but also because it gives me further information as to the ideal positioning of my first portal which is in a fairly standard position. I then assess the capsular labral injury but also look for any bone loss or any humeral sided soft tissue avulsion. For making subsequent portals I use a spinal needle with an out-to-in technique. This demonstrates not only the ideal site for the skin incision, but also the direction for the ideal entry point into the joint and then onto the glenoid. For most cases, I use a single portal technique unless performing a significant capsular shift. It's important to fully mobilize the labrum and rasp the glenoid neck to produce a bleeding bone base to promote good healing of the reattached labrum. I then pass a PDS suture, which will be used to shuttle the definitive suture this is tied to the joint sided end of the suture shuttle and is then passed through the labrum. I then draw the suture up to where I estimate is the correct site for an anchor insertion and fixation. I then check the external rotation range to ensure that the shoulder will not be over tightened with this point of fixation. If I'm happy with the tension and range, I pass the sutures into the anchor and secure them with a clip or snap. I'm then ready to drill at the appropriate site and ready to then immediately insert the anchor, minimizing the risk of losing my hole and correct insertion angle. I ensure I cut the suture ends as short as possible, minimizing the amount of exposed suture material in the joint. I usually try and insert three anchors, but care must be taken not to overcrowd these to minimize the risk of subsequent glenoid rim fracture. I then check the range of movement and stability at the end of the procedure. The principles for posterior bank art repair are similar, but there are one or two additional tips on technique. The first thing is to consider the orientation of the joint, and this is of course about 30 degrees off the sagittal plane. When we look in the shoulder from the back, however, the brain corrects the image by about 30 degrees to the sagittal plane, so we have a view where the glenoid face looks to be going straight from front to back. When we look from the front, the brain does the same thing. So now we end up about 60 degrees off when comparing what we see on the screen to the angle we need to approach the glenoid from the outside of the shoulder. Thus, to achieve the correct angle onto the glenoid for posterior anchor insertion, we need a very lateral portal and a direction which is almost in the coronal plane. Another consideration is that the deltoid is thicker posteriorly 
and thus there's a greater distance from the skin to the glenoid compared to that in anterior repairs. Because of this, care needs to be taken with entry point and direction in the larger and more muscular patient, and on occasions a longer cannula may be required. When I first started out in my career, I used to find it helpful to draw a line on the top of the shoulder in line with the joint to remind me of the orientation of the joint line, and I still encourage my trainees to do this. Using a single portal technique also makes posterior repair much easier as space for instruments can sometimes be a little tight with two cannulae. Finally, positioning the arm in external rotation can be helpful as it serves to relax the posterior capsule, giving you a little more room to work in. Many thanks for listening. If you found this video helpful, have a look at my channel for other technique videos. Thanks.